Warning, the following video may cause you to cough up hairballs. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 cringiest cats moments. For this list, we're looking at scenes in the motion picture version of Cats that had people hissing at the screen in horror and laughter. Number 10. Rum Tum Tugger is too sexy for his fur. Move over, Dr. Frankenfurter. There's a new overly sexualized musical character in town, and his name is Rum Tum Tugger. The Rum Tum Tugger is the curious cat. Seriously, his name is Rum Tum Tugger. They weren't even trying to be subtle with this guy, and his big musical number only piles on the already thick innuendo. Always on the wrong side of every door. As soon as I get home, then I got to get a bar. The whole thing plays out like Magic Mike XXL in 3D. Of course, we're not entirely sure if the XXL applies here, if you catch our drift. Rum Tum Tugger is a curious cat. The Rum Tum Jason Derulo looks like he's having a ball, but there's a reason why the Razzies nominated him and his, quote, CGI neutered bulge for worst screen combo. Whatever the filmmakers were thinking, the character and his song are indeed curious, among other things. Number 9. Heading to the Heavy Side Layer. Virtually everyone's goal in this movie is to reach the heavy side layer. Just as they never explain what jellical means, though, the heavy side layer is also somewhat ambiguous. You are the jellical joy. Since the Jellicle choice is given a new life, we guess going to the heavy side layer is like being reincarnated. So when the Jellicles put Grizabella in the hot air chandelier, they're basically sending her off to die. That's disturbing, even though the uplifting music suggests we're supposed to find this inspiring. Sorry, but watching Grizabella float into the clouds, we can't help but think of the Atastupa scene in Midsommar. Just replace the magic chandelier with a cliff top, and this sequence suddenly takes on a much darker meaning. Number 8. Mr. Mistopheles' Endless Song when McCavity snatches Old Deuteronomy, it's up to the magical and clever Mr. Mistopheles to bring her back. The literal cat in the hat has a little trouble performing in front of everybody, however. Magical Mr. Mistopheles. <laughs> Take that last sentence as you will. As Mr. Mistopheles continues to struggle, the surrounding Jellicles try to give him a confidence boost. They do so by repeating the chorus over and over and over and over again. Magical Mr. Mistopheles. While the melody is admittedly catchy, the number itself goes on forever. Some songs get stuck in your head, but this one claws its way there. Magical as the sequence builds to its climax, Mistopheles finally uses his wand to make some real magic happen. Again, take that as you will. Number 7. Gus the Theater Cat Oh, Ian McKellen, what did they do to you? One does not simply go from playing Gandalf to playing a theater cat named Asparagus, or Gus for short. <laughs> We'd like to think that McKellen and Patrick Stewart dared each other to accept the silliest roles possible. Whereas Stewart wound up playing a piece of poo in the Emoji movie, McKellen got stuck drinking from a milk saucer. Gus. As ridiculous as McKellen looks here, he does manage to bring a fair deal of class to the role. My coat's very shabby, I'm sin as a rake, and I suffer from palsy, which makes my paw shake. Sure, he essentially talks sings through his song, but McKellen's delivery has a bittersweet, nostalgic sentiment to it nonetheless. I Still, how can you not cringe watching a performer of McKellen's caliber get turned into the feline equivalent of Rex Harrison? Number 6. Bustopher Jones Good evening, all. We will give the movie this. James Corden as Bustopher Jones is an ideal casting choice, and he does deliver one of the film's more entertaining performances. Bustopher Jones, I'm not skin and bones. In fact, I'm remarkably fat. We get the feeling, though, that Corden knew he was starring in an inevitable dud. After all, there is a reason why he reportedly skipped the film's theatrical run and has continually made fun of it. 
Buster for song thus carries a very self-aware tone, almost as if Corden was trolling the material and the audience. For a similar reason, when game is in season, I'm found not of foxes, but blimps. It's like watching a comedian purposely bomb on stage. It's so unfunny that it's not funny, which in turn makes it hilarious. Was this Corden's intention? Hard to say, but this scene will leave you uncomfortably laughing in any case. <laughs> Number five, Skimble Shanks can fly? As Skimble Shanks the railway cat taps his way onto the screen, this musical suddenly turns into West Side Kitty. number is well produced for the most part, it takes a bizarre turn towards the end as Skimbleshanks ascends upwards and spins into oblivion. We get that McCavity made him disappear, but why did Skimbleshanks propel up into the air like one of those Sky Dancer toys? Was that just part of McCavity's disappearing act, or did Skimbleshanks channel Mary Poppins? Whatever the explanation is, this song really went off the rails. Number four, Old Deuteronomy talks to the audience. Just when you thought this movie couldn't get any more disturbing, Old Deuteronomy starts directly talking into the camera. You've heard of several kinds of cats, and my opinion now is that. Granted, the characters repeatedly address the audience in the original stage musical, but this movie was deprived of any fourth wall breaks until now. As a result, this scene simply comes off as random, not to mention highly unsettling and kind of invasive. What makes the scene particularly cringeworthy is that it just keeps going. Every time it seems like Judy Dench is about to wrap things up, she turns back to the camera with another rambling bit of nonsense. Before a cat will condescend. All we want is to leave, but old Deuteronomy takes the audience prisoner. We don't know about you, but we're gonna go adopt a dog after this. Number three, McCavity gets undressed. For a good portion of the film, McCavity the mystery cat dresses like Dolomite. That face should be on a poster. In the middle of Bombalarina's sensual number, however, McCavity emerges without his coat or hat. McCavity, McCavity, there's no one like McCavity. On the one hand, a lot of the cats in this movie seemingly parade around in their birthday suits. On the other hand, there's something very off about McCavity's design. Whereas most of the other cats are covered by thick layers of digital fur, Idris Elba looks like he's wearing a skin-tight bodysuit made of velvet. Crimes discovered then. McCavity's not there. <laughs> While every character here has humanoid features, McCavity appears to be more man than cat. So when he starts frolicking without any clothes on, we half expect him to shout, we're going streaking. Way to make Fritz the cat look tame. Number two, the opening number. Let's say you went into this movie without seeing the infamous trailers that broke the internet. Jellicles can, angelicals do. Jellicles do, angelicals can. About a minute in, you might have been thinking, all right, the production design is creative, the melody is nice, this all seems quite promising. Then those darn CGI cats came on screen and it dawned on you, oh boy, this is gonna be a long 110 minutes. Jellicles, songs for jellicle cats. Jellicles, songs for jellicle cats. Matters only grow more awkward as Jellicle songs for Jellicle cats gets rolling. Here's a fun game. Take a shot of milk every time they say Jellicle in this movie. Actually, don't do that, because you'll suffer a lactose overdose before the redundant opening number is even finished. We get it, you're all Jellicle cats. Now, can you please explain what Jellicle means? <laughs> That's what I say to you. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the Jenny Any Dot sequence. Rebel Wilson is clearly doing whatever she wants here, making Jenny Any Dots, the old Gumby cat, a highlight of the film. Even without Wilson falling over and swinging her tail around, this musical number would still be completely bonkers. When I have got them lined up on the matting, I teach them music, crocheting, and cutting. Dilly dop, dilly dop, dilly dop, woo woo. Why? Well, for starters, Jenny Any Dots keeps little mice with human faces as pets. 
As if that wasn't enough nightmare fuel. Jenny Anydots also has dancing humanoid cockroaches that she snacks on. Ooh. Roach genocide arguably isn't even her worst offense. She proceeds to unzip her fur, exposing a pink ensemble covering more fur underneath. And this isn't even the last time Jenny Anydots unzips in the movie. Does this mean that she skinned multiple cats and turned them into bodysuits? Jeez, this movie should have been called Silence of the Cats. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.